Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord this morning. Praise the Lord this morning. Yes. Thank you, Susan Lee. Thank you for your prayers. I need them. Melody, thank you. Blessings this morning. Blessings. Blessings this morning. Thank you all for joining in this morning. This is the day the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it today. Today, praise the Lord, somebody. Praise the Lord. Glory, hallelujah. Praise the Lord this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, this morning. Thank you for another day, God. This 25th day of the month of April, thank you, God. Thank you for what you're doing uh, through the body of Christ, God. Thank you, Lord, that your hand has not left us, Lord. Thank you for this nation, Father. Thank you for, God, our communities, even now that are gathering together to come uh, go to your house of worship, God. We pray for them right now in the name of Jesus. We pray for people that are in their homes and, and, and they won't be going uh, to a church or a service or a congregation. God, we pray for for them this morning. God, we thank you, God, uh, with the gift of communication, uh, even this live stream broadcast. Father, I thank you, Lord, and pray that your spirit move in such a way that someone's life is forever changed. Someone gets drawn closer to you, King Jesus. And so thank you for this word. In your holy name, I give thanks, Father. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord this morning. Praise the Lord. Yes, I am traveling and and my goodness, we are in, uh, we have been in the book of Acts. We are in Acts chapter 13. If you have it, uh, your Bibles, please turn to it and we're going to get into the word. Uh, uh, the, this this time in the book of Acts, now we, we're beginning to see a shift. Uh, the remaining chapters are primarily dealing with uh the church and the ushering in of the Gentile people. And there's a move of God that we start uh, reading about the gifts and reading about the, the supernatural miracles uh, that God continued to pour out on the body of Christ. And we begin to see how God started bringing in the church, bringing in diversities, bringing in uh, different uh, ethnicities and and so Acts chapter 13, get it, and we're going to get into the word this morning. Praise the Lord. I hope you're feeling good today. I hope you got a smile on your face. Good morning, my wife. Good morning, sweetheart. Good morning. Good morning, Coach. Coach McDonald, good morning. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord this morning. And we're going to get into Acts chapter 13. And in and, and verse 1, it says, and now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas uh, and Simeon that was called Niger and Lucius of Serene and Madian, which was brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. Now we're in Antioch. You know, Antioch is where the, the, the first the first revival Revival broke out at Antioch when a mighty move of God happened. And now we're reading about prophets and teachers now that are that are coming together, that are administering uh, the body of Christ with all the things that go on with the church. Read about Barnabas, who was a, I mean, look at the diversities here. Barnabas was this, he was this Jew. Uh, he was this Jewish man uh, from Cyprus and Simeon that was called Niger. Uh, Simeon was his uh, Roman name, and and Lucius of Serene. And I looked up Serene. Serene is in northern Africa, uh, uh, and, and Manan, which was brought up with Herod the Tetra. He was he was brought up with uh, you know with, with some type of you know 
you know, royalty relationships. And, and and what we see is the diversity of God working now. We, we got people from Africa. We got people from Libya. We got people from uh, Jerusalem. We, we got people from all over. We got we got Saul, who was from Tarsus. Uh, you know, you know, he was a you know, uh, he grew up in a Greek culture and yet he was study in Jerusalem up under uh, uh, Gamal. And so look at the diversity here. These people are coming together at the church at Antioch and they ministered to the Lord and fasted. The Holy Ghost said, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work were unto I have called them. Now, Let's look at this. The Holy Ghost said. Now, what type of voice did the Holy Spirit has or have? He spoke. And undoubtedly, he spoke through one of these prophets. So we're reading now of these different gifts that the body of Christ are ministering with. And you can read about that in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7 through 10. Uh, the, the Bible talks about all these different gifts uh, that that were given, you know, these nine spiritual gifts. One was a, you know, a word of wisdom, or, or and, and then a word of knowledge, or the working of miracles, the gifts of prophecy, the gift of faith. All of these these gifts, they they are they are they are for the body of Christ. They are working, and so there is one of these prophets. He gets uh, a word of knowledge. The Holy Spirit is speaking through him, and he's given an utterance. And saying, separate Barnabas and Saul, separate them, you know, for the work of the ministry. And 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 and, and think about this now. These gifts, they did they didn't just disappear. These gifts are still in operations today. So many of us, when we think about the workings of miracles, we 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 kind of you know, we placate that to someone else or uh, the, the, the workings of healings. And, and 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 it's almost like, you know, these gifts, that was for the old Bible times and and not now. But I take, you know, I, I take offense with that because the Bible says in, in Romans chapter 11 and verse 29, it says the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. That means that when God gives a gift, he's not taking it away. That the same God that was using these gifts back in the New Testament, we are using these gifts now. People still get word of knowledge. People still get words of wisdom. The workings of miracles are, are continually happening now in this dispensation. And so we should not look at this text and see these things and say, you know, the Holy Ghost spoke, you know, can can the Holy Spirit actually speak? Yes, he can speak. He can speak through me. He can speak through you. He can speak to your spirit. He can give you a revelation. He can give you a utterance. And, 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 and by faith, we speak out those things. Verse three, and when they had fasted and prayed, and laid their hands on them. Now we see the laying on of hands. They sent them away. Barnabas and Saul. They sending them out now. They're going out because the Holy Spirit is pushing them out. So they being sent forth by the Holy Spirit. They weren't sent forth by the pastor. They weren't sent forth by the apostle or anybody else. They were sent forth by the Holy Spirit. They had got this utterance or this word of knowledge from one of these prophets that undoubtedly has spoken to them and they adhered to it and they went about doing the work of God. And the Bible says uh, they departed unto Seleucia and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. And when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogue of the Jews. And they had also John to their minister. John, John Mark, man, he's along with them. The three of these men, they are traveling out with ministry together. And when they had gone through the Isles unto Pathos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar Jesus. Now, this sorcerer, this this individual that supposedly had power and could tell you 
things and and and, and could work all these different uh, cantonments, uh, these cantonments, these different different magical portions, and 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 this bar Jesus, he. He has some reputation. We we read about Simon the sorcerer in Acts chapter eight, and and so this is a sorcerer now that they come in uh, contact with. And the Bible says in verse seven, which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. And they he desired to hear about Saul. He desired to hear from Barnabas. I mean, I mean he, he, he desired to hear these men speak. He says, come. But Elmas, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. This sorcerer now, this bar Jesus, now he is resisting Barnabas and Saul. Now, here it is, the confrontation in ministry, our walk as believers in Christ Jesus. We are going to have confrontations with the dark side. You're not just going to get this free pass. You're not just going to be uh, saved and on your way to heaven and not and not deal with some of the adversities that, that happens on this journey in life. The Bible says they that live godly will suffer persecution. We're going to have trials. We're going to have tribulation. That's a part of our journey. It's a part of Saul's and Barnabas' journey here. They are dealing with a whole bunch of things we're going to be reading about. And it's what Christ dealt with on his journey. And so you and I, when these things happen to us, we should not just be shocked. It is part of our journey. But we should endure hardness as a good soldier for Jesus Christ. Yes, this individual, this sorcerer, he withstood them. Verse 9, then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, listen to these words of Paul. He says, oh, fool of subtlety and of mischief, thy child of the devil, thy enemy of all righteousness, will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Look at Paul. Paul will not put up with this. Paul had a mission to accomplish. He had work to do for God's kingdom. And this individual was resisting him. He was not only resisting Paul, he was resisting God because Paul had the word of God in him. And notice that Paul did not put up with it. He spoke a word. Now, this is powerful. He spoke a word and told that individual he's going to go blind. And immediately a mist fell upon this sorcerer and he was blind. He had to have someone to lead him. Look at the next verse. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. We're going to stop there. Look at that. Salvation has happened when there was a demonstration of the power of God. Now, we are not to be going out here, you know, Casting people, bl casting blindness upon people, but but Paul, he 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 ministered in such a way that this individual, you're not going to stop what God is doing, and we've got to we've got to catch hold of that spirit here in 2020 and 21. We cannot continue to allow the evil one to, to hold us back to tell us how we should worship, to tell us how we should believe, to tell us the interpretation of the word of God itself. The word of God speaks for itself and glory to God. And so I titled this message this morning uh, out of this, 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 when I was reading this, in, in verse number 10, he said, O fool of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, Thou enemy of all righteousness, will thy not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? What are the right ways of the Lord? 
That's what I titled this message, the right ways of the Lord. This is who we should, you know, this is who we should be as individuals, living a life that reflects the right ways of the Lord. Living like having an attitude, having a mindset, going about our daily uh, businesses with the right ways of the Lord, the right way. There's a right way to serve God. There's a right way to go about being a husband, being a mother, being a Christian teenager, being a there's a right way. Amen. There's a right. I want you to get that in your spirit. The right ways of the Lord. The first one that jumps out to me, uh, this the, 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 the right ways of the Lord is what these individuals were doing in verse number two. He said they ministered to the Lord. They minister unto the Lord. My first point is we need to minister unto the Lord. We need to know that we are going about doing God's ministry. We are doing God ministry when we go out and we, you know, we feed the homeless. When we go out and visit the sick and we go out and give out, you know, water to the thirsty. When we go and do all of these different, you know, praying for people, you know, laying hands on people. We are ministering to the Lord. When we go to these other cities to help out with a storm or a catastrophe has happened like Katrina or an earthquake. We are we are doing it in the name of the Lord. We are doing, we are ministering unto the Lord. We're not ministering unto people. God is using these individuals in our text to minister to people, but they are doing it because they are called by God. They are they are born again believers and they are ministering unto the Lord. And so you need to get that in your mind when you're going out and doing these things. When we're not ministering to people because when you start ministering to people, people will let you down. People will do things to hurt you. Or people will say things that, that you're like, what am I doing this for? And I'm trying to help you. And then you're turning this around on me. But you're not doing it so much to them. You got to get in your mind. You're doing it unto the Lord. Remember Moses. The Bible talks about Moses who was delivering those in those those Hebrews people out of bondage. He was taking them over to the promised land. God had promised Moses all of these things. And, and Moses, he got somewhere along the line, he started ministering unto the people. And the Bible says it went ill for Moses. When you read uh, Psalm 106, verse 32 and 33, it says that, uh, that, that Moses, it, um, uh, they anger him at the waters of strife so that it went ill with Moses for their sake. For they provoked his spirit. They provoked Moses' spirit. And he spoke unadvisedly with his lips. They got him. Moses, this great deliverer, this man of God, he was doing the work of God because he was ministering unto the Lord. But because these people kept nagging him, because these people kept saying, well, we don't have this and we don't have that, he disobeyed God. When you read Numbers uh, chapter number 20 and verse 11, the Bible says God told Moses to speak to the rock. The, these people were thirsty. They wanted water. And Moses was so frustrated, he struck the rock. He struck it twice. He disobeyed God. And the Bible said it went ill unto Moses. And Moses, he doesn't get to go into the promised land. He doesn't get to cross over the Jordan. He died on the other side of Jordan. I don't want to die on the other side of Jordan. I want to go over and fulfill the call upon my life. That's got to be inside of you. You got to want to go over and fulfill the call upon your life. Sorcerers, you're going to get this resistance. You're going to get people coming after you, trying to trying to stop you from fulfilling the call of God upon your life. But you've got to understand you're not ministering so much unto them. You're ministering unto the Lord. You are doing this in the name of the Lord. You are doing it. The Bible, that's why Jesus says, bless those that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. In Matthew 5 and 43 onward, he is speaking these things. Why? So you can know that you are doing it to glorify God. And some people are not going to receive you. Some people are going to reject you. Some people are going to talk ill against 
do. And let me tell you what, you gotta get some, you gotta get some thick skin. You gotta be able to take, you know, you know, accusations. You gotta be able to take criticism in a way that it doesn't stop you from going about to do the work of the Lord. Amen, somebody. I pray that you get this. Then the next thing, the, that's the right way of the Lord. The next right way of the Lord is, is we, we should implement fasting uh, upon our journey and our ministry. There are times where we just need to fast. We need to fast from food. We need to fast from social media. We need to fast from television. We need to fast from cell phones. We need to fast. We need to just consecrate ourselves. There's something about fasting that draws us closer to God. One thing. Another thing about fasting is it kills the flesh. It kills a lot of the desires of the flesh. Things that you can't get over. Things that, man, just haven't worked out. We need to go on a fast sometime. Fast from bread. Fast from some sugar. Fast, fast. These individuals fasted and praying. And the Bible says when they were doing this, the Holy Spirit spoke to them. And let me tell you something. I've fasted uh, for a number of years now. Personally, I've gone on these different fasts. And I can I can honestly give my testimony that, you know, there's nothing like the presence of God. There's nothing like the denying your God sees all of this. You know, he, his eyes are everywhere. Proverbs 25 and 2, the eyes of the Lord are everywhere, beholding the good and the evil. God is watching us. And I can recall times on these fasts that I'm telling you, I've gotten things spoken into my spirit. I've gotten like a direction to go in a direction not to go, and it has worked out for the good. And not only that, in my seasons of fasting, I was able to kill some of the desires that needed to leave me, things that I just couldn't get over, things that just kept, you know, you know, you want to fast sometimes. Jesus says some things uh, doesn't work in life unless you fast and pray. Some of these demonic spirits that attach themselves to us are not going to leave us until we consecrate ourselves and we fast and pray. This is the right ways of the Lord. The right ways of the Lord. See, this individual, this sorcerer, when Saul said, will you continue to pervert the right ways of the Lord? The right ways of the Lord, it deals with consecrating yourself. It deals with fasting and praying. It deals with it. Amen, somebody. Glory to God. I'm talking about this. This that When we start denying ourselves, man, we, we become eligible for all of these gifts to start working through us in such a way that you know, the Bible says God's no respect of persons. And so praise the Lord. Praise the Lord when we can consecrate ourselves, when we can, when we can just push away the table. But, you know, let's say dinner. We're not just going to eat dinner. We're going to eat breakfast and lunch. We're going we're gonna to back up and we're going to spend that time praying to God. We're going to ask the Lord some things. Amen. God is looking. God is watching us. He is looking at our desires, the, the right ways of the Lord. The next point I want to give is what Saul and Barnabas is doing and what these men at Antioch was doing. They were preaching the word. They were preaching the glorious gospel. They were preaching the word of God. They did not back up. They were delivering the word. You know, and this is the way we need to understand. We need to understand who we are in Christ Jesus. We need to go out and make disciples. And we, I'm going to tell you what, it, it's not so much about how much knowledge you have. Yes, we need knowledge. We need to study to show ourselves approved. Yes, we need this. But more importantly, we need the Holy Spirit working through us. When the Holy Spirit is working through you, I'm telling you what, you are, all of us are preachers. We may not be pastors and apostles and, and you know, evangelists and teachers, and, and but we are preachers. We are ministers. 
so we can go out and preach the word of God. We can preach this gospel. I love uh, Colossians um, uh, chapter number one and verse um, um, verses number 25. And, and it says that where um, whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, even the mysteries which had laid hidden from ages and from generation, but now is made manifest to his saints. Verse 27, to whom God would have made known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, who we preach, amen, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. You preach the word, you preach the glory. You know, you know what the mysteries is? Here's the mystery I'm going to give you to you. The mystery is that for every born again believer, Jesus Christ is in you. That's the mystery. He is in you. Now let that so the gospel, the glorious gospel, the message is not just, you know, being baptized, not just it's not just no Jesus Christ, the King, the resurrected King is inside of you. He wasn't inside of Moses. He wasn't inside of uh, Ezekiel and Jeremiah. He wasn't inside of those, those prophets and those judges and those, but he's inside of us. He is in us. This is the mystery. Christ in you, the hope of glory. We should preach that message, that glorious gospel, that shalom, that peace is inside of me. The world didn't give me this and the world cannot take it away. Christ in you, the hope of glory. He is inside of you right now. Glory to God. That is enough. That is game, set, match. I can preach that. Christ is in me, the hope of glory. It does, I didn't go to a seminary to get this. I, I didn't go into law school. I didn't go to medical school, but I went at the foot of the cross, glory to God. I went there and surrendered it all unto him, and he has raised me up in newness of life, and now he is with me. And so it doesn't matter if I'm not accepted by the status quo. It doesn't matter if they don't accept. What matters is Christ is in you, the hope of glory, and go and preach that. Preach that word. Preach it to somebody. Tell somebody that Jesus is in you, that you are a brand new species, that you have been changed. You have been supernaturally changed by the power of Christ Jesus. And so the worries, the stress, the Depression, the anxiety, that all these things the world tried to put on you, it can't stay on you because Christ is in you. The hope, glory to God. We got to preach that word. That's what Paul was preaching. That's why he was so adamant about getting this word out. And no sorcerer, no witch doctor, no religious heritage is going to stop me preaching the word. Preach that word. Amen, somebody. Preach the word, preach the word, preach the word, preach it, preach it, preach it, teach the word, teach it, teach it, teach it. Make disciples. It's inside of you. If Christ is inside of you, you can do it. Glory to God. You can do it. My last point I want to make is don't put up with evil. Don't put up with it. That's what Paul did. He did not put up with it. I and mean, if evil is going to come, it's going to happen. You, got, it's, you know, here it is. It, it's just, it's, it's like, it's constantly real time. And you see this, all of these things that are happening around us. And it's easy to get sucked into it. But my word to you this morning, don't fall for it. Don't, don't fall for it. It's a trick from the wicked one who's here to divide. He's 
trying to to divide people. But let me tell you what, God is not about dividing. Jesus says a house divided against itself cannot stand. We should be about bringing people together. And when the evil tries to come and stop the word of God, when the evil tries to come and divide husbands and wives and divide sons and fathers and mothers and daughters, when he come try to divide churches. He wants to try to break up congregation. We cannot put up with it. No, Jesus said, as he says, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Glory to God. I'm not going to put, Jesus didn't put up with it. Remember, he turned over the changers, the money changers. He drove all of those people out of the house of God. Why? Because he was not going to put up with it. He made no provision for for the flesh. And some of you people, some of us, we deal with a lot of our old man. People try to bring us back into who we used to be. And let me tell you what, don't put up with it. That's not who you are. You are a brand new creation creation in Christ Jesus. So you walk a different walk. You talk a different talk. God has done a new thing. Glory to God. So don't put up with it. Don't engage in that type of gossip talk. Don't be around all of that type of debauchery, drunkenness, wantonness. We, we, you, you remember, turn to quickly Romans 13 and verse 14. I'm going to read these two verses, then I'm going to close. Romans 13 and, and verse yes, Romans 13 and verses 13 and 14. The Bible says, let us walk honestly. Let us walk honestly. Now, we're not going to put up with dishonest. I'm not going to put up with liars. I'm not going to put up with, no, that's not who I am. And that's not who you are. He says, let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not going out in the streets, getting drunk, talking loud, acting crazy, not in chamber and wantonness, not in strife and envying. We're not going to envy people. That's what the enemy, he wants somebody to get mad because someone has something that that that, that person may want or desire. Man, we're not going to be envying people. We're going to bless people. Yeah. We're going to encourage people. We're going to try to build people up. We're not going to make room for evil. The Bible says, put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put Christ Jesus on. Put him on. Put him on this Sunday morning. Put him on today. This is the day the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Put him on and make no provision for the flesh. Make no plan. Make no advanced plans. That's what that provision is talking about. Advanced plan for sin. Make no provision to fulfill the lust thereof. Man, we're not going to put up with it. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. These are the right ways of God, the right ways of the Lord. Do you hear what the word of God is speaking this Sunday morning? We've got to, we got to know that we're ministering to the Lord. We're not, we, we're doing, we're dealing with people. Yes, but this work is unto the Lord. We are doing it to glorify our God. Uh, this is why I'm on these broadcasts every Sunday morning. I'm, I'm trying to draw people closer to Christ Jesus. That's what you want to go out and do the call that God has upon your life. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to draw people closer to Christ Jesus. And so I'm going to preach the word. I'm going to continue to have my mind focused. I'm ministering unto the Lord. I'm doing all that I, I'm going to do it. I'm going to sell out. I'm going to be empty. But I'm doing it to glorify him, not to glorify me, not to get some type of following. Some people, you know, so no, I'm not looking for the adoration of man. I'm looking for the adoration of our king of kings. Glory to God. Hallelujah this morning. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. To whom all blessings flow. We're going to take communion, but this, that I'm going to, you know, just go over that again. The right ways of the Lord. Learn to minister unto the Lord. Learn that. That when you're out here doing it, you're doing it to, you're doing it because God has equipped you to do it. And if God has equipped you to do it, go do the work. 
implement fasting upon your journey, your ministry, whatever you're doing. It doesn't matter. Even in the corporate world, there are times, man, it's just such a grind. It's, it's, it's the next, you know, it's the next deal. It's the next, you know, thing that's coming up. And there are times that we just need to just stop and step back. I'm not going to eat lunch this week. I'm going to fast. I'm going to preach the good news. That's the gospel. The good news is that Jesus is in us. That's the good news. That's the good news. That is, I'm telling you, he is in, uh, he's in me. And I'm telling you what, I, it, it's, it's like, it, it's these things that are being spoken by the, the, the apostle Paul, how you become a, 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 a brand new species, uh, a new creation, it, a, a, a creature that never existed before. This is when Christ comes in you. This is the born again experience. Hey, right? glory to God. I'm going to preach that. Then I'm not going to put up with evil. I'm not even going to make any provisions of it. You know, we're not dumb. We're not stupid. I mean, we know when we know when when temptations come and we know when we put ourselves in certain situations, it, it's probably not going to go good. So make no provision for it. Don't put up with it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God, I want to thank you. I thank you for the word this morning. I thank you, God, for uh, blessing uh, your sons and daughters, God. Even now, as I speak, I, I speak blessings over them now. I speak blessings over their minds. I speak blessings over their minds right now in the name of Jesus. Every negative thought, every depressing thought, every suicidal thought, every angry thought in the name of Jesus. I speak life to your mind right now in Jesus. Live and not die in the name of Jesus right now. I say be healed now in the name of Jesus right now. Rise up again in the name of Christ Jesus. Get up, get up, get up again. Glory to God. Get up again in the name of Jesus. Paul spoke those words to a sorcerer, told him he was going to go blind, and he went blind. I'm speaking a word to you today. Get up again. Bodies be healed again. Mind be encouraged this morning. Confidence come back to your mind this morning. I call you back now in the name of Jesus. Get up in Jesus' name. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. We're going to take communion. We're going to give thanks. We're going to remember the body of Christ Jesus. The bread of life, the true bread which came down from heaven. Man, we, we discern the body. You know, the Bible says Jesus, he took all of those beatings for you and I. And by his stripes, we are healed. Healing comes from Christ. And so, Lord, we thank you for the healing. We thank you for your body that you willfully gave for us. We partake now. Here's yeah, some juice, the wine, a symbolic a symbolism of the blood of our resurrected king who has reconciled man unto God. So Jesus, we thank you for the blood. We remember you, Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise God. Anybody got any comments before I close? Praise the Lord. I know we finished up a little earlier today, but praise the Lord. We got the word in. We got the word in. What, what a beautiful day God has given us. I want you to enjoy this day. I want you to go about doing the things of the Lord. I want you to remember this word, the right ways to serve God. There's a right way to do it. And if there's a right way, then there's a wrong way too. We don't want to be on that wrong side. So, Father, I thank you again. 
Uh, may the Lord God bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you shalom. May the God of all peace and the God of all hope give you joy in your mind and in your soul this Sunday. 